All right, so what is going on with multifamily deals? If you're in a multifamily syndication right now, particularly value add deals, we're seeing some real challenges there. Um, I spoke with one investor that said he was in five capital calls uh, in, in different deals, not in our deals, but in other deals. He was in five different capital calls and we're seeing uh, some struggles in our deals. We've had a capital call or two. And you know what really is happening, particularly in value add multifamily, I'm gonna jump into it here, talk about why there are struggles right now, what the opportunity is, what you can do as an investor. And I think you're really gonna enjoy this video because it's gonna give some insight into all that. All right, so my name is Bronson Hill. I'm the CEO of Bronson Equity. We've got 2,000 multifamily units like this. We also do oil and gas, car washes, other sorts of alternative assets to provide cash flow for investors. Uh, I'm not an investment advisor. These are just my opinions. Uh, we're going to go over in three kind of simple steps on how to, you know, what's happening in the multifamily space here. So interest rates are rising and valuations are dropping. So why is this happening, right? We're going to get into, you know, as interest rates go up, valuations go down. Well, why is that? It's because same with single family. If somebody has a, you know, a 4% or 3% uh, interest rate on their home and they sell the home, the person coming in typically can't afford to pay if they're paying a higher seven, eight, nine percent, right? They're paying a different amount. So the monthly payment, the affordability is not there. So we're seeing that. So I have said in the past up to this point, the margin of safety, right? Warren Buffett loves this term margin of safety. The things don't go perfectly. What is your margin of safety? Well, our margin of safety in a lot of deals has been the value add portion of the multifamily, right? If we renovate all these units, we see rents rise from $1,000 up to $1,500. Um, and so that provides a margin of safety. Well, we've seen some deals where we've done, you know, renovated the majority, three quarters of the units, or maybe 50% of the units, and the value of the property is actually below what we paid for it. Now, how is that possible, right? Well, it's because of this. It's because interest rates have risen so sharply. So let's look at this for a second here. Uh, this is the highest rate of increases in interest rates in recent history. You see how quick that's been going. So the last 43 uh, years, that's the fastest it's gone. Um, there's also uh, this chart here from 1979, 1980, it rose faster, but we also started at a higher rate. And so uh, we just, this is a very, very sharp increase, particularly starting at almost zero, uh, you know, going up to you know, five and a half percent on the Fed fund rate. And then of course that leads to even higher rates for consumers. So again, why are the valuations dropping? It's because the cost of money is up. Right. If there are no, if the buyers are out there that are trying to buy apartments, or if we're trying to buy apartments, it's just the same numbers that worked a couple of years ago don't make sense now because it's just you can't even make it cash flow. Right. So that's that's really the challenge. Buyers are willing to pay less for the same property. Um, so you know that's just something to really be concerned about. Now the second thing here to talk about when we're talking about this is capital calls. Right. If you're in a deal, uh, multifamily deal, you may have encountered a capital call. Uh, like I said, I know guys have been through five of these, right? There's, there's a lot that you know, is happening right now. So, so why is that? What is it? Um, and really what it is, is a, is a group comes to investors and says, hey, uh, the plan we're doing here is not working, or we had this additional external thing that's come up that we need more money, right? And so an investor has to judge and say, you know, uh, okay, uh, is this truly an external thing? Is this a unique situation? Uh, you know that, that this group needs more money, or is it something that is going to be good, or is it uh, you know putting good money after bad? Right, that something happened. And this group is not going to work. So we've seen it kind of uh, in general as I've watched. Uh, sometimes operational issues can cause this. If you have uh, some operational issues or property manager issue, it can reduce occupancy, and then it can lead to other issues uh, in the property. Maybe you know again with expenses, we've seen just expenses, and even for my friends that have fixed debt and other things where expenses have just exploded. Right, expenses when it comes to insurance, we've seen insurance triple in Florida. We've seen uh, costs of labor and good uh, labor and, and services and materials go up substantially. So we're just seeing much, much higher, um, you know, expenses. And so it leads to, you know, there's this term called break even occupancy, right? What is break even occupancy? So it's like, okay, what's the amount of, you know, being filled up for this particular you know, property that we need to be where we're just breaking even. And, you know, a lot of these deals we bought, sometimes they were, you know, 65, 70%. Well, now we're seeing some of these are in the 90s, right? 90, 95% break even. Well, how is that? Well, one, rents have risen, but maybe not as quickly as the expenses. Maybe rents are still a little bit low. They need to go higher. But again, it creates, it creates a dynamic where it's very, very challenging. So that's where it's challenging. We also mentioned too, uh, you know, when you go to sell or to refinance, particularly with bridge or shorter term debt, which is what value add is mostly, uh, you know, bought with, um, you know, a lot of times the value is not there. So it's just, you know, the, if the property's worth less, and you've put all this money into it, then there's a problem, right? So that's a serious problem. So I will say this, uh, this is just a side note here, but um, for uh, the third point here is fixed rate debt 
right now is more attractive, right? Why is fixed rate debt more attractive? Because you don't have to sell within a certain short period of time. It doesn't have to be a couple years, two, three years. You get usually five to 10 years where things are fixed. Now, there are pluses of doing it. Sometimes it's challenging with, uh, you know, with value add deals because you've got to, um, you know, you got to put a lot more money down. So I guess that's a downside as you put sometimes 50% down, sometimes 35% down versus, you know, 20, 25% for bridge debt. So there's some challenges there. And then also if you go to refinance, there's something called a prepayment penalty, right? So in your house, this usually doesn't exist. If you pay off your loan early, you just own the house. Well, in a multifamily, if you sell it or you pay it off early, you actually have penalties for doing that. So the reason for that is that the people that are the banks that lent this money, they want to know they're getting paid, you know, with a degree of surety for the next five or 10 years. So if you pay it off early, um, even though it's attractive sell, you could pay millions of dollars of prepayment penalties, which we have. We've had deals that we've made a lot of money on and we've sold and we've had to pay literally millions of dollars of prepayment penalties for having fixed rate debt and selling early. So there, it's not that it's all a bed of roses with fixed debt. Right now, fixed debt looks awesome. And if you have fixed debt, we've got a few that have fixed, fixed debt and it looks awesome because you have it for an extended period of time. And um, really the question here is, is how do you uh, deal uh, with, as an investor, you know, when, when a deal's struggling, what do you do? A lot of people are like, well, what do I do? If my deal's struggling, what do I do? And again, you know, this is up across the industry. What, what, you know, what are things you should do with your deals? And I think the first thing is maybe readjust expectations. You know, this thing that you were investing in to try to get cash flow um, may need, require some more cash, right? It may require some more funds to get things going. You've got to evaluate, is that plan actually going to work? And so to readjust expectations. Second thing really is to focus on the learning. You know, well, what are you learning in this? Was there something that, you know, I learned some things through this. Okay, um, you're doing value add, bridge debt, even with a value add component, um, where you're increasing rent substantially, doesn't always work. Valuations can drop pretty quickly, pretty significantly, right? And, and so that's definitely a learning point. And then, you know, if there is a loss, if somebody loses some, some money, um, it doesn't mean that you're a failure. It doesn't mean that, you know, everything's terrible. A lot of times we, we, we like when, you know, things, we make a ton of money. We don't like when we lose. I hate, I hate losing money, right? I had that story I've shared with you pretty publicly that uh, I lost $70,000 in one day on an options trading strategy when it was a third of my net worth, right? That was a pretty bad day, right? Uh, but what I did is I learned from that. I used that to my advantage to learn and grow and I can actually, you know, fail forward and learn from it, right? A friend of mine says that in my life, it's either success or it's a seminar, right? So there's things I can take and I can learn. And so I learned from that, that I'm not a great options trader, right? So I can learn from that. Uh, in a situation with uh, some of these deals, it's like, okay, well maybe, uh, you know, when, when you know, some, some of the rate situations really paying attention to that when rates are, are low, is that, you know, if they go higher, what does this do to the value of a property, right? And be able to have additional cash to be able to cover that. So. Um, anyway, wanted to share that with you. Hope this was helpful. Um, you know, again, there's a lot happening right now, and I think it's important to talk about. A lot of my peers, I found, I, you know, they, they're aware of it. They're talking amongst each other, but not really among the community. So I think it's important we talk about this. We'd love to hear some comments uh, below here as well. Uh, this quote says, "If you want to know what a man is really like, take notice of how he acts when he loses money." That's Simone uh, Wheel, right? So if you're, if everything's going great. I'm a happy guy, right? If things aren't going well, do I become a different person? And so that's important as a character building thing as well. Um, I want to share this video with you. This is the best investing advice I've ever received. I think you'll enjoy this video. I really had fun putting this together. Check it out up here. And then if you haven't joined our investment club, we do have deals we're seeing in multifamily. There's starting to be some deals that are coming really attractive. Uh, we've also are doing things outside uh, of, of real estate, you know, in, in the oil and gas, the uh, the ATM machines, which has been a super great cash flowing deal and in car washes, right? There's some really some advantages there. So it's important you have some diversity in your portfolio. If you haven't joined our investment club, check out the link below. Uh, thanks for taking the time to educate yourself. We'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.